Hi there folks, thanks for checking out our board game night. Today we're having a look at Rome. This is from Red Raven Games and designed by Ryan Blockets. Uh, we're going to give you a quick uh, overview of the game so you can see what the mechanics are like and what the decisions are to be had. Uh, and then we're going to show you some gameplay where we'll play a few rounds and you can see us playing it. And then we'll come back with our verdict. So to help me with this, I've got a few friends here. I've got Molo. Hello. This is his copy of the game. Uh, Martin. Carla, Hello. and myself, Jason. Okay, so, um, as with a lot of Red Raven games, this is set in the world of Arzium. This is the new world that uh, he, Ryan builds on his with his artwork, and it's in similar games as Above and Below, Near and Far, Islebound, and City of Iron. Alright, so what do we have here? Each player has three characters. These are the characters, my characters over here. We have a block wall of blocks over here this is part of the expansion so it's an alternate thing you can add to the game if you want and depending on where you start you'll get some coins so martin's the first player he starts with no <coughs> coins colin and i have one molo the last player will have two what we're going to do on our turn as you can see by these little turn sheets over here first thing we do if uh, all our characters are used we get to refresh them otherwise we can flip one character and place their markers so for example over here am this character over here, you can see over here, it places two blocks and it's specifically in that pattern. So I would take two of my blocks and then, for example, I might go one there and one there. Because it has to be in the same format and the same orientation that I'm facing. So once I've done that, um, I can then resolve completed map cards. There isn't a map card because I've placed it over two whole ones. There are six blocks in each one. Once a Full map card is completed, so i.e. six blocks on there. Uh, we then take whoever has the majority of the blocks covered with their color. So, for example, if I had three, Carl had one, and Molo had two, I would take the character. I would score those two points at the end of the game, and I would have a new character that has those abilities. Um, and then, if I have any money, so for example, like I've placed it underneath there, I would get two money for that and one money for that. Get added to my ta tableau, and then I could use it to buy artifacts. So we have artifacts up on the row down there. I'll zoom in so you can have a quick look. So you can see the artifacts on the left or the top there from the left to right. You can see the mask has worth seven points. It gives you a special ability which in the middle there it talks about the invisible blocks. They are all the same. Yeah. <clears throat> and then the victory points on the right. So for example that mask you can use it to add the invisible blocks and i call it the invisible blocks we'll talk about that when we get to the gameplay and you can see how that works they're, they're more like optional blocks aren't yeah they? but they they cost all right so that's basically the the focus of the game once person one as soon as one person gets 10 characters in their tableau so seven more additional characters the game will end we'll play equal amount of rounds and then you count up your victory points that person is the winner um you can do a couple of other things, like for example, if you've used a character and you still got two face-up characters and you want to use that character again, you can do what's called an early rest, where you pay one gold for each face-up character you have, you then flip over the rest, and also artifacts you can flip over at that point. And then I should probably talk about actually this crystal thing over here. This is, as I said, was just an optional expansion that came with the game. Uh, when you get a new character, you can, so for example, if I take this character over here, I can then add crystals to this equal to that character's blocks on its thing. So, for example, I could do one there, and one there, and one there. And then, basically, that means once I've filled up the a certain crystal... That's right. Huh? There's mm -hmm. two. One, two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter, it's just for show anyway. Once if you fill up a green character crystal, you get a victory point. Blue crystals, you get four. Red crystal, you get seven. And you can use that immediately when you get a new character. You can pay for the, the invisible blocks, whatever you called them before. Yeah, they cost two coins per block. Right. And that's pretty much it. We're going to keep going around. Every time a map card is taken, we refill it with a new one from the deck. And we keep going until someone has ten characters. I do have a question. Yeah. What is the theme of this? Uh, we're explorers, and we're finding trapped characters out in the wilderness. Everybody has a sleeping sickness that has caused them to wander off. Yeah, so we so rescue them. Where they are, and we're locating where they are within the area. Little search parties. 
Well, there you go. And then we, uh, we'll... So we'll... triangulating them. Mm -hmm. So this character is lost in this area. That guy has no head. <laughs> <laughs> he has floating coin. <laughs> <laughs> My All right, yeah. let's let's get started. All right, so you join us for the gameplay section. We've had a few rotations already. Uh, a couple of us have got a couple of characters. I think uh, Morton's got two new characters. In oh, a dog and a cat. That's right. Well, I'm keeping them well apart because yeah. well. don't want chaos to happen. And Carla's got a new one. We've got some artifacts already included. So you can see the board's got some stuff on. We'll explain as we go. So Morton. Take it away. Okay, I'm going to use Crimson the Dog. So, he allows me to put a minimum of three down. I can obviously do these um, hollow mm. blocks as well. It costs me two coins for each one or this amulet that I've already used. So I might be doing that. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to put those two there and that one there. <laughs> so I get a coin for covering that up. I see that goes for... Oh, yeah, I'll get the coins on it. Yeah. In fact, I'm, specifically, if you've got blanks, you can then pay for blanks once you've acquired okay. a coin from putting the first token. I don't know, so. Okay. Uh, and okay. now uh, we finish this card. So Jason and I go into a little bidding war over this. To see, I'll bid two. Screw it. So basically, I have to put three in, otherwise, you know, I like the card. I, yeah, uh, I will. I will bid three. <clears throat> so I get a coin now that I yeah. was. I was on that card. Yeah. And then our tiles come back, and then the character comes to me, and that was during your turn as well, it was interesting. So, this is my new character, as you can see, Sreya Raven Ravenius was making tea on a stone pinnacle. Right. This don't, is Don't forget as well, you get to put your crystals down yeah. in that shape. So this is the, the new action I have, but before we add that to my actions, I can, I can add it to my, I don't know what to call this, crystal square thing. Tableau. So I uh, think I will just do the simple thing. I'll put one there, and actually, it's there and there. Oh no, not no, quite. that's not quite right. Move that. I thought one. I was terrible at no. spatial. <laughs> okay. And I'm not going to use. The, I'm not going to pay for the blank square. Better off going down one like that, and then get a guaranteed point there. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But... <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so just to see, you can see it obviously matches hers on there. Make sure they know. Oh, it was my go, yeah. <laughs> uh, and we have a new Character. tile out as well. So, Oh, and fits perfectly with Arium. So if you could do the honours, please okay. stick him down on there, which gives me three mm -hmm. coins. And then I have to flip him over. Oh, that worked out well for you, didn't it? Jesus. Yeah. And then it goes over to Carl. And as you can see, me. I've got three of my characters face down, and obviously she's the only one I don't have face down. So I will use her next turn, or I can pay to refresh. So I'm using Lulamutra to finish off this one. Yourself, oh. So no one gets any benefits from coins there. You get the card, and you get to pay some crystals down if you want. Millie Heron was sledding on a broken door. Um, so I have got... This was the fashion of the time. While you're thinking about your crystal thing, yeah. Molo, you want to take your turn? Uh, she could buy an amulet as well. Oh, yeah. Do you want to have got any money? No, I don't have any money. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, do, 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 do. Yes. Finish the card, Milo. You know you want to. Flip this one. Uh, Lomi Crust. Hmm. Uh, and I will also shoot somebody. So I'll pop down one there. Should we not two. do that? Oh yeah, I'll do that. And kill that. So just to explain, just push your bow over. Yeah, the horn bow. So the bow has the ability to basically, when you use one of your characters to place a tile down, you can use it to replace someone else's tile. So it's a little threatening. Okay. And if you obviously replace it with coins underneath, you get the coins. And I will pay four money for this little old candle, which is the zombie candle. This candle illuminates only organic materials. Let's see. All right. Over to you, Martin. Yes. Tricky, tricky, tricky. I think I'm probably going to use Voracious the Cat. And I'm going to... Oop. Mm -hmm. One moolah. Now 
he does have some empty stuff on, but I do not wish to do that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we need another amulet, by the way. Uh, and in which case, I'm going to spend four. That one's you can slide, isn't it? Uh, yes. And that one you can refresh. Refresh your character. Was that refresh? Is that not one where you turn the card? No, that's refresh. Oh, okay. oh man, both of those are good. I'm going to buy one of them. Um, I'm going to take that. So this is interesting, uh, on my turn now, as you can see, this is the only character I have left. So I can either use her now or pay to refresh, which would be pay one. But I, I do like what she does, and I can use my wizard hat to fill in that blank gap there as well. So, my choices are I could put two there and then that one will just be a, a dud and I won't get to place that down. Which gives me two coins, that's pretty cool. Uh, but it doesn't fulfill any tiles, or I can put it there and there. Which will fill up this tile. I'll have the majority. I'll get that. Has two points in the bank, and I'll have a new character to use, and it'll put me some more. How is that not your first answer? I mean, that seems great. But coins are good as well, and there's no not many places else to get coins. And of course, I'll reveal new tiles for new coins for you guys. So that's that's what I'm thinking about here. But I don't know. I'm just going to go for that. Yeah, that seems inordinately useful. So. If you could do that for me. So I'm going to use my wizard hat, or my enchanter's hat, to use for the blank. Pretty much guaranteed two cards there as well. And that'll flip her. And then on that card, Molo and me. Martin will get a coin each for having a tile on there. Lovely. My tiles come back. I get a new character. It is Ember Mez. And then I get to put some more crystals down as well. While I'm thinking about that. Should we be seeing those, by the way? If yeah, that's fine. Down. Yeah. Okay. Right, that is fine. So I'm going to put those two there. And then it's one, two, and there. Okay, right. Yeah. Oh god, there's so many coins now. I know, and they're all everywhere that I can't reach them. Which is really quite annoying. Although, I think I'm going to use my storm sword. Oh, who's going to get the new good news? Shoot that one. Yeah. <laughs> I was just looking at that one. Wine. I told you you should have taken that last turn. I don't know why you did it. Uh, you have to replace with one of your tokens the one you shoot. She's yes. yes. going to. Yeah, I'm going to. Oh, okay. Presumably, I have to oh, right, be within yeah. my sheep <laughs> shape. So that one. And there. Oh, okay. So that's three coins. And you say you can use the coins you just got to fill in the blanks as well. So she could spend another two to put one on there as well. Hmm. Is that what you said? Uh, sorry, what was that again? Okay, yeah, you can use the, the coins you just received from the tile to fill in the invisible ones or hollow ones. So or Carla's got the option of basically, she could pay four and go in there and there, or pay two and go there, which would then get her one back. So, yeah, so effectively just pay one for yeah, them. Yeah, why would you not? It seems crazy. Now, do you want to buy last back, Carla? No. No, okay. Alright, over to you, Marlo. So mm -hmm. you've got no face of characters, have you? Um, I do not, so they will flip back over. So automatic refresh. Yep. There we go. And you can refresh your artifacts as well. I can indeed, yes. Um, there we go. And now. Now. What do we do? Uh, hmm. I bet you I know which one Mona is going to do. Okay, I'm going to do this one. Yes, I thought so. And I'm going to shoot a piece. Okay, so I will go. Boom. Bam, bam. Bang. And get that coin. Okay, so this is complete. So uh, you get a coin teller. Thank you. There we go. And we have uh, Fowler Hadkron was making sand castles. <laughs> Good thing. I'm assuming it's like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a lot of coins. It's also out in the ocean. Yep, yeah, I think Charlene's going to probably go visit there. <laughs> Whoop. Ah, actually, that might still work. No, no, I didn't want you to. Yeah, I picked the wrong one or the right <laughs> one. Okay, go. Well, I've only got one character again, which is Ember Mez, and she uses three tiles, of which two of them. I know you guys can't see that. I'm just going to push it up so you can see. So I could do 
to there and then I can miss my last one so I'm thinking to there and then my last one would go there which would be skipped or you could fill in those as well yeah that's true or I could go there and then my last one will go there mm, I don't know I think I'm just gonna go yeah I'm gonna go those two there my final one will go there which can't go there so it's missed that's her used. I'm not going to pay to fill in the gaps. I do have five coins, and I would like. Um, well, they're both the same. Really, yeah, but... actually, I'm going to just keep my money. I'm not going to buy. Oh, really? Oh, mm. I think they're really good. I am going to use my gambler machine. Fifty-five. Put it on there. Two. Oh, no, that doesn't work. Ugh. Which one are you using? I can't see. It's not important for you to see, it's important for me to see. <laughs> well, it's not for me that's seeing. Your head is directly in front of the thing. Um, You're breaking the fourth wall, Jason. Well, if I can't do that, then I'll just do that. Which character did you use? Righty, I will um, use the candle to push this guy up to here. Well, you've sod off. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, I didn't do that. I'll do that. Oh, we'll just do it in a minute. I'll do it in a minute. Hmm. Anyway, uh, so yeah, we've done that, and then we will uh, put two down with uh, this blue lass. Okay, uh, paying two coins to do so. And we'll go there and there and we claim those two coins I spent. Right. And I better do my crystal thing before I forget again. Okay, what is it? It is. Uh... Alright, and it goes over to you, Cubs. Do you, right. you do I a research? All of my characters. Seems like the best way to go about that. Thank you. Haha. <clears throat> ah, interesting. I'm going to use my hat. Don't forget, you can reset honest. your thing. You reset that. I'm going to use my hat. My hat. Push you down there. Oh, he's oh wait, no, that wasn't. Oh, yes, it was. Then I use my <laughs> dog to essentially go like that, like that, and like that. Complete. Which gets me two coins there as well. That's a three-way tie. Mm -hmm. That is correct. So the three of <laughs> well us. Well done, Crimson the dog. So the three of us will do a bid. Mm -hmm. um, so, how much money you got, Jason? Five. How much money you got, Carla? Four. She's not in it. Yeah. Oh, Milo? Uh, three. Ugh, Christ, do I want to spend <laughs> five on that? Really? I'll bid three. I will pass. Uh, and I count it. Yay, it's mine. Well done. I get a coin. Yes, as do I. And I get to put a thingy down here. So while he's doing that, I'm just refreshing my characters. Obviously, we were really cramped on trying to keep it under the, the camera. Yeah, so I've got you'll be able to table hog this guy. <laughs> so I've got five characters, as you can tell from like that. And you done yet, Martin? I'm finished, yeah. Yeah. Okay. New tile came out, which is a pretty decent one actually. Good point. Mm. Rubbish ability. Yeah, one it right in the, <clears throat> and then you have to pay for all the rest. Um I think I should hope so. <laughs> 20, all right. 20 minute pause while he thought about what he's gonna do. I'm gonna use her. So she's gonna go there and there, and then I'm gonna use my enchanter's hat. To go there. Pretty much stole my turn there as well. So that gets me two coins, and then I'm going to yes, spend right, right. seven of my coins. So six, seven. I'm going to take the broomstick, which is the mana compass Jeez. cut from an ancient tree that feeds on magic. Magic. And that's my turn. Over to you, Carl. Hmm. 
Okay, so I think... Oh, crikey. The big W. Therefore she is. is she, have you got your sword available? Uh, no, no, I do not. But I think I'm going to do this. So that one's already claimed by myself. And I've got two empties. And I've got two up there. So I'm going to pay two. Go there. To allow me that one. Mm -hmm. And then those two. Mm -hmm. Two cards. Pwah. So uh, red, green, and blue get a coin. Uh, red doesn't. No. Because red wins. Uh, she does on that one. She does. Oh, yeah, she gets yeah, one yeah, for yeah, there. Yeah. 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 So red, green, and blue get a coin. Green gets that. Well, green gets the card. The card, yes. Yeah, you mean decent ability for three points, really. We'll have to play some more crystal down. Sorry. And then red gets stuff. My god, it's like Christmas. Two oh, new look. cards coming out. He, he oh, matches. Oh, yeah. Mac the machinist. Oh. I got the dark teller. Was babbling for curses in the field. As they do. As See, they what's play. interesting about this, every time you get a new character, it takes longer and longer to refresh the old characters. That's why I was tempted by that uh, rucksack and whatever the other thing is, the little mm. mana potion. So you can refresh some of those good characters. Or you can flip one face down, which means your full refresh comes out quicker. Oh yeah, that's a good idea as well. That wasn't my idea, I read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to um, flip this out. Uh, and left cheek. Cool. Then what's all the oh it's all roughly the same again. Um hmm. I'll take out the grab one of them. Boink. Which allows me to refresh a card, I think. And the meteor pickaxe. This is it another smashy one? I uh, know it looks like you just get an extra coin. Oh yes. A mining one. Uh, right. I'm going to use Martig Strilio, who's oh, a, that guy. He was a boar. And apparently, he was chopping up uh, his boat for fire. Terribly wood. dull. So, I think goes there and there, and I'm going to use my mask and put an additional one there. That will net me double a coin, and I think I'm going to buy that rucksack. The rucksack. Okay. Yes. Oh, thank you. And the next one out is the Firefly Staff, which is a um, freebie again. Well, I'm going to use Ember Mez. So she goes two down, and then two ghost ones, and then one over there. I'm going to use my broomstick mm -hmm. to fill in that one. I was going to fill that card in that turn, but then I thought, why would I give it to you? That'd be stupid. <laughs> well, so red and yellow get a coin. I just to resolve this, I think I get two coins. I don't think there's any coins in those. No, yep. So I get two coins from that. And I get another character. And I get to place three more crystals. Mm -hmm. How many characters is it to win? Ten. ten. Well, not to win. To end. Mm. And is it as soon as someone's got ten, that's it? No. Uh, uh, equal rounds. Oh, so I'm first player, so. Yeah. And, Ends with Molo. Indeed. I see you're actually using some of my crystals oh, on there. Shall I go ahead? Yeah. Oh, okay. That saves me a trip. Cool. Did you get a coin, Carly? I haven't taken that coin, sorry. Just the ones that are there. I've got so many friggin' characters now. Ooh, Five, six, man. seven. There's a map tile missing. Oh, I've just got it. Mm. Come on, I've got one job. <laughs> Okay, ooh, right, ooh, 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 things and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, is it my go? Yes. Oh, handy. I will use this uh, little chicken man that I've just recently got, whose name is Antris Strait Stregal. I was selling his own feathers, apparently. Hmm. All right, so flip him over. Sorry, can I just buy something before? Oh, yeah, yes. sorry. Go for it. So, uh, I just want him. The little staff. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, I should probably put them down there, but never mind. Right, next up is the Frog Helm, which is another killy one. Nice. They're a pain in the arse. 
Go ahead, Milo, you're using your chicken. Okay, I am indeed using my chicken. Uh, oh, oh, am I? So one, two, three, one and one, uh, I guess. No, I'll pay the two coins and put one okay, there as well. Okay, there we go. It was just a guess. Bam, bam. Bigger low. There we go. Okay. Right, so two coins to red. Uh, no, just one coin to red. Yeah. One coin. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. Well, otherwise, we'd be doing mm. lots of the game wrong. Mm. <laughs> it's just one bird. Okay. Uh, Map I piece. Require another person. Oh, this is Sarah Lim Limina. It was tossing her gold coins into a ravine. I'm the safest <sighs> place these days. I can't still remember that. I'm going to use Reza. Soul owner. Mm -hmm. That was really bad. <laughs> God, that was really bad. That's right. No, These crystal things right. are a pain in the ass anyway. I think that was right. Okay. <clears throat> Before I decide what I'm going to do, I want to see what the new tile. Oh, actually, I can see what it is right yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a really nice one. As Cranston well. Silver carving a statue of himself. Well, I feel like I'm definitely going to use Vera for that. Three, combine that, I suppose. Wait, the mod yep. is finished purchasing. I might as well. Can't hurt. I'm going to use Vera, who's the L shape. And she's going to go there, there, and there, which is three coins. But don't bother giving me the three coins. I'm going to add that to my four and buy the clock. The clock. There we go. Thank you. This is. The Ancient Compass, a tool commissioned by the Ivory Queen. She does like her compasses. Yes, she does. I'll finish off this round. I think that'll be it for the video section, the gameplay section. Um, As it's getting a bit wheel unwieldy now. <laughs> It's a bit AP pro this game, isn't it? Well, yeah, and the other <clears> thing is obviously you can't you can't really plan ahead. Well, you do, and then someone scuppers it, and then you're like, <laughs> yeah. do, I, do I still want to do that thing? Like just now. <laughs> oh my god! Like just now. Oh. I think you need to assume that it's going to happen mm -hmm. every time. Okay, so I pay two, but I get two back. <sighs> hmm. That is annoying. Especially as you buy anything? Go, no, you got no money. Oh, you got two money. I've got two money, but not enough. Alright, Molo, your last turn on camera. Right. Make it flashy. Bugger. It's it's going to be anything but flashy, I think. Is it just reset? <laughs> no, it's not just reset, luckily. So, uh, hmm. I really wanted that. I am unlikely to get it now. It's a bit annoying. Okay, we'll do something completely Oh, look, 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 look how flashy. I'm going to flip this over, which will then flip that back over, and he'll then flip back over again. And I'll whack uh, those on there for two coins. No, I'll just rethink my go. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, Mod is the first player, and we've come around back to him. We've had 20 minutes of gameplay, so I think you get the general gist. If you have any questions, obviously stick them down below and we'll try and answer them. We'll be back in a sec with the verdict. Alrighty, so we've finished off the game. Uh, we've cleared off, obviously, some of the cards from this, what you're looking at now, as it, it took up quite a lot of space. Uh, in last place was Carlo with 31. And then third was Molo with 33. Uh, by a tiebreaker to second place, which was Martin, also on 33, but he had a coin and Molo had none. <laughs> so that makes him second, Molo third, and that means I won with 35 points. You get points based on the areas that you've explored. You well, get points characters for characters you've got, really. Oh, well, yeah, you know, that's joined your little warband. <laughs> you get points from exploring and uh, artifacts. And, and then you get this point. bloody crystal. Thing, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I got 20 points from those, I got 11 points from artifacts, and I got 4 points from that crystal thing. What's a warband? You're supposed to be waking people up. <laughs> Forming a warband! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that is the scores. We finished the game. Let's have a chat what we thought. Milo, as this is your copy of the game, 
and you've played it a couple of times now. What did you think? Or what? I, yeah, I I really like it. It's a nice little abstract game that has like the nice sort of um, what is it, Red Raven? Yeah, Red Raven sort of storybook art to it. It's just generally fun. These are completely pointless. I, I, should, I should have just left them in the pack, perhaps. But otherwise, yeah, it's it's fine. Um, it's uh, I'm sure everybody's bored with me saying this. Bears vague similarities to um, Bullfrogs. Uh, it, it's definitely the superior game of the two, I think. But yeah. All right. What is it that you liked about it? And is there anything you dislike other than the bollocks crystal thing? <laughs> I I um I I don't know. If there's anything I particularly dislike about it. The, the theme is completely meaningless in this. It's just nice to have it there. You know, nice to have the little the little pictures and stuff. But um, doesn't really. Add or subtract anything from the game. This could just be like a grid with some little bingo markers, <laughs> and we'd very much get the same out of it, I think. But yeah, um, yeah, there's nothing I particularly dislike. At the same time, it's not a massive game. It is a, a simple, abstract little puzzler where you're sort of um, tetrally, uh, tetrising about and trying to claim cards. Mm. Yeah, it was quite interesting. Uh, there's some subtle, subtle mechanics in there. It's like the more characters you get, the longer it takes to refresh, which that, means with the uh, these that makes life a lot more difficult because these are yeah. often quite powerful. But you have to wait so long for them to come back. The more guys you win. Mm. Yeah, the artifacts are really useful and they they can change your game. But getting to use them again takes a while when you keep getting more characters. But the more characters you get, the more abilities you have to use. It's a really clever effect, and I think that's quite interesting. I mean, to be fair, that's I think that's probably the ban uh, the balancing mechanic there is that they are very powerful, but you don't get to use them that often. And if you do want to use them, you're having to reset, which will cost you. So there there's a pro, you know, and a con. And I will also say, although you could play this with just you know pen and paper almost, if you like, the theme definitely oh, makes the it much. Yeah, the, 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 the setting, the setting, the artwork. You know, it, it makes it a far more pleasant game to play. I quite like the fact that it's set in the, what is it called, Archaeus world or whatever, which mm. he does all the artwork for. I know you were saying earlier that you're getting a bit tired of the artwork. Well, only because, I mean, he's obviously clearly a very talented guy, oh, but they, they do start to look all very, very samey. Like, mm. all his characters are all very, I mean, even like oh, the poses, I mean, like they, yeah, that's... like all of his characters and all of his games seem to like stand like face on like that, you know, like a, a mug shot. Kind of I don't know. <laughs> Purposeful though, it's sort of like a, an RPG sort of character. Yeah, but it's game. all of his games. I, I know that, that's the thing. It's it's like the Meat Show. You know, people are saying now they all look the same. Oh, he, his definitely are as well. What was the one where you the one where you sort of fight monsters and you have banners? Um, um, the um, um, the, ancient world, yeah, isn't it? Sort of that that doesn't world. have the whole like face guy thing, does it? Can't remember. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was an earlier one as well. So what what would you give it out of ten, Milo? Um, um, it it's weird. It's a very simple game, very straightforward. But it is it does exactly what it's supposed to. I I, I would probably give it like a seven and a half and eight, just because it is just yeah straightforward. It is the perfect version of what it is. There's just a simple game there, really. You know. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I'm sort of similar on board with that. It's like in terms of, I, I do like the artwork. I think the artwork is nice. Uh, I do have sympathy with Martin saying in that, you know, when you play a lot of Red Raven games, and the reason we're playing a lot of Red Raven games is because generally they're really good, is that you can get a bit samey and you're not really seeing any new themes or settings. This theme is obviously not really, a, there's not much of a theme here. You're literally just putting these little Tetris shaped discs down and hoping to get something interesting out of it which is cool uh it's it's probably a little long at four player um mm. you probably want to a crazy long i thought mm. i mean that was i mean with explanation that's got to be over an hour possibly even 90 minutes i reckon and but, i think that, uh, but uh, that was significantly longer than the three player game which yeah. is yeah. really odd really. well you, you conclude obviously i mean i know he's not the longer to, the or a, uh, most ap prone player no, but there's more AP in a full player than yeah. there, there was in the three player. Well, I mean, significantly so. Because it changes, the, the layout changes so much yeah. by the time it comes well, around to you, you again. You can't do a lot of planning, can you? Yeah. No. Like, so, so much of the board state changes by the time it's come around again. You're like, right, now what can I do? Because everything's changed from what I was going to do. Yeah. Mm. Whereas in a three player, you've only got 
you know, you've, that's reduced by 25% or whatever, 33%. Isn't it? But overall, I quite liked it. I thought it's a, it's a very simple game. I'd happily play it again. I think it's one of the better of these lighter type style games, you know, because you can play this with anyone. The artwork is obviously good. This thing, by the way, I would suggest throwing this in the bin. <laughs> this is just utterly pointless. I mean, it's a little harsh, <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's a little annoying because the gemstones, although pretty, and I do like pretty, so... Um, it, it's a nice they idea, move around but very easily on it there, feels a little tacked on. And it, I actually it does. think it diminishes the main game it, a little bit. Agreed, I think so as well. Tacked on. This yeah. is just like a little Kickstarter exclusive. Don't worry about this if you're buying it retail. Yeah. You're not going to get this. In well, it. exactly, <laughs> and that's why I was saying don't even and, worry and about it. You are not missing anything. And no. I, I, like I said, I like pretty. I would definitely go for the gemstones. But I don't think it added anything to the game. I actually so, think it detracted from the game. Yeah, I agree. It, it added unnecessary faff, and only like w most but of us. It gave you another route to scoring. Yeah, it did, uh, but. but do you think maybe that's why we had more AP because we were focusing on this and then we were focusing well, no, on that? No, I, hope before. <laughs> oh, I don't. Well. Think, I don't think so. Not that I didn't the first time I played it, but mm. that, that thing was incidental. You know, I would basically take the guy, do whatever was necessary, and then go right now. I'll just put the crystals on the board, and it didn't, it didn't matter. Yeah, I was. Mm. I was just dumping them wherever they could go. There's cause... not enough points to make it worth thinking about. I don't think. And that's why I suggest yeah. don't don't play with that. Don't even worry if you don't if you get the retail edition of this. And you don't have it. Don't even look for it. Yeah. It's just not worth it. However, I do think the uh, other variant in the back, where you can have two uh, the stacking variant, two tiles, sounds more interesting. I think. Yeah. There's also another variant there where you can do the out outpost thing, where we didn't use either. Which is if you circle someone's. Oh no, we, we no, did. No, no, we did. Yeah, we, we just, just didn't do it. Do it. <laughs> well, if, I think we forgot. As well. <laughs> yeah. If you do that, you, you can. By accident. I actively went out of my way to try and do that the last time I played this game, and. It's not easy. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's only hard. worth like three, three points. points. Yeah, you say yeah. only worth three points though, but if Mo or me had got three points, mm. yeah. we'd have won. Yeah. So, you know, and, and Carla would have mm. gone from last to second. That's true. Yeah. So that three points would have made a difference. Well, overall, just to finish off my opinion, I actually quite liked it. I thought it was really good. I definitely recommend it. I'd say seven, seven out of ten, seven and a half. Yeah. How about you, Carla? <laughs> Oh, you're not a fan? No, it's not games. that. No. I, I don't score games. I, I like this more than Above and Below. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I do. I don't like Above and Below. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with the game. It just doesn't gel with me. I just didn't have as much fun as I was hoping to have with that game. But this actually ticked that kind of Tetris-y feel for me. So as far as the... And I don't, I don't know how many Red Raven games I've actually played. I can't think off the top of my head. I think well, it's possibly just. Far as well. Have has I? she? I don't think she has. I, I, I don't think I have. I think we've. And you don't like uh, above and below. Near I have said, yeah. Hmm. And again, I think don't like is a strong word. I think I was just very disappointed in my <laughs> in, in the two times I played it. So, um, but I really like this. I think it's simple. It's easy. It just filled everything. So. Uh, you know, so and also like said, anyone I can would, play this. You can play yeah. this with non-gamers, new gamers, kids, kids, yeah. yeah. And 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 it doesn't detract at all from the the fun element of this. So is this a thumbs up for you? It is a thumbs up. I like this. Okay, I like cool. it a lot. How about you, Cubs? This was your first play. It was Molo's copy, it first play, and we've all played it other than you before. Indeed. Uh, yeah, it was it was a bit long, a bit longer than I thought it should be, and the table was just a mess. <laughs> I mean, the the amount of stuff you get as you get rolling when people have got like seven, eight, nine characters each was ridiculous. And you're supposed to have them all kind of out so everyone can see. see yeah. This is supposed to be a small game, and the the table space it took up was ridiculous. Um, and obviously that was exacerbated by using those mm. bloody gem cards as well, but. Only a small amount, don't get me wrong, but it was, you know, another thing to to lay out there. It's sort of a bit Tash Kalari, this game as well, isn't it? It does have Without a bit, the yeah. um, rotating, which is probably a bit cleaner in terms of how to play, because that the fact that you could flip, rotate, whatever in Tash Kalar meant you were sat for ages constantly <laughs> doing this. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I mean, you get one ability I'm like that. Only like. in this direction, so it kind of made it a bit easier to kind of, um, I guess, just be clearer what you could play mm. um it's okay it's inoffensive i don't it's not gonna you know blow my scarf or anything it's fine 
Um, I think in terms of my score, I think it's above average, but probably no better. Maybe six, I think. It's right. fine. I think artwork, as I say, he's a very good artist. Don't get me wrong. He's just his stuff is very similar to his other stuff. And perhaps because of me, I've seen a lot of Red Raven games, that's possibly why I feel that way. But his artwork is great. Don't get me wrong. Um, his designs, however, they all do seem to bring something different each time. To be fair to the guy, you know, while his art might be quite similar, his game design clearly isn't. I mean, John Howe mostly paints scenes. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, it's uh... yeah. I'm, I, I'm not saying that, but I mean, he's successful now. Maybe he could get another artist. I mean, well, the I thing know? is, uh, he probably does. I mean, he's a really talented guy because he does all the artwork, he does the production, he does the design, the development, and all that on his own. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he probably could paint different or art, do the art completely different, but I think he chooses to keep it in this sort of... It's, it's certainly possible, yeah. But it might just be the style that he paints in. And let's be honest, if you can do your own artwork, why would you pay somebody else to do it? Mm. Yeah, so... I I, I, I I get that completely. As I say, it's a, it's a personal thing for me. Mm. But I've heard people say that about the Micho, you know. Yep. All of his stuff looks the same. It's like, well, so does his. You know, no, I agree. It's, it's not fair to have it about uh, you know one artist and not a, and give the other one a free pass know. when the same issue is there. Mm. And so, if it bothers you with one, it should really bother you with the other. I mean, they are very similar in terms of like tone and mm. you know yeah. style, everything. So, um, oh, it, it definitely, it's it's a complete like it feels like an extension of the same artwork. Yeah, very much. All, so, yeah. all the way. Yeah. But obviously, so, that that is by design to a degree. Mm. He's, I mean. He clearly didn't plan to have it all in one world initially, but he's gone down that route now. Mm. And and so that's why everything looks very similar. But hey. I find it quite interesting because obviously him, like you bring him, him and the Micho, um, who have very distinctive art styles, mm. you know. Yeah. Uh, whereas like someone like Vincent Dutrade, who's also a really good artist, but his art is very generic. Mm. So it's hard to go... Well, wow, his art's all the same as every other art he does because his art yeah. is you pretty can often tell a Vincent de Trey yeah. artwork, but not not because it's like very similar to other pieces it's done. It's just like that, you know, it's, he's got mm. his kind of, I guess, benchmark on there. Or it's yeah. because it, it ticks very specific boxes that are more mainstream, and that's yeah. why. Whereas this is very specifically stylized. So if you don't love the style, you might get a yeah. little. Um, of it. I, I think that's also possibly a, re a reason why I'm sort of defending it more, as that mm. does very much sort of fit into my niche yeah. preferred art style, the sort of whimsical, slightly well, storybooky sort of look. I mm. think it's very pretty. His landscape stuff, especially, it, it's very pretty. That's, I like the that colours. landscape. Actually, is one of his better uh, landscapes. Yeah, yeah. I think. What's interesting now that I think about it, he had a game recently on Kickstarter. And I'm trying to think what it's called now. Yeah, it was that big story. Type yeah, Sleeping thing. Gods, I think it's called. Something like that, yeah. And uh, that didn't have the the this art. Well, it has a similar art style, but it's not set in that world. You know, where okay. it has the cat people and mm. the lizard people. It's actually just generic humans and stuff. Okay. But it still has a very similar look to this. Mm. So that's quite interesting. I will say as well, the theme is... Well, yeah. <laughs> in, 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 in no way does it come through at all. It's an abstract game. Mm. Yeah. As that. I, it could have been, you know, we each had our colours and just yeah. a, a blank, you know, black and white cards or anything. So, it's, yeah. in fairness, given the whole sleepwalkers in a landscape thing, he's clearly come up with the game and then come up with a theme that... So matches, yeah. Mm. So <laughs> it's not just. But I quite, on. Is, I quite like the fact that the artifacts have the little fluff at the back. Yeah. You know, yeah. like it, it doesn't relate to anything. It's just a little bit of fluff in the world no, and that sort of thing. The characters were doing while they were dreamwalking. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah, some of the characters have the flavor text. Didn't mm. they? Yeah. That's that's fine, you know, mm. creating the world and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, it is an abstract game where he's just gone. <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> it, it makes it look pretty and, 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 and enhances the, the play of it, I think, as opposed to it being a boring theme. At least yeah, we have certainly. something pretty to splendor. look at. Well, <laughs> if, if, I like Splendor. No, Splendor's a great game. But... If I hadn't have asked at the beginning of the video what the theme was, I would have zero idea. <laughs> no, it's I, true. I'm t t zero. No clue whatsoever. <laughs> 
So but, that will tell you how strongly the theme comes through. But you do, you do get it. You, you have like a little bit of a landscape here. And then when you find the character, you're flipping it over. Now you've got the character to use. So the, although I, I agree, it's very abstract. I just it I is just, linked. I just picture this like band of people walking in a conga line <laughs> through this wilderness. Well, could they not though? I mean, I had a slot machine apparently. That was... <laughs> it was a living slot machine. A living like... slot machine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. I think. I just thought uh, something, but sorry, just randomly with the, the idea of um, and this complete nothing to do with it really. I okay. spotted. Um, it's well worth Academy. waiting around for. <laughs> Arcane Academy out the corner of my eye there, which is another game where it's just gone. Oh, we've got this game. Hammer the theme into it. Oh yeah, it works now. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, I agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do that. It's oh, I've got this cool mechanic, cool game. Let's just fluff some theme around it. <laughs> Anyway, that's Rome from Red Raven Games and designer Ryan Lockett. Artist Ryan Lockett. Production design Ryan Lockett. <laughs> so go check it out if you like this. It's coming to retail soon. See you guys later. Bye. Bye.